Hi there! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamara and I'm in the process of curating your go-to place for all things women in business, career development, as well as consulting. This week I'm back with a highly requested video and that's giving you visibility into the end-to-end -end consulting recruitment process. Also, before we start, can we please note that I really miss my blazers and therefore I will be wearing the most extra piece of clothing I own, a tweed blazer, ladies and gentlemen. As you might already know, the consulting recruitment process is pretty time consuming and requires a lot of effort. Therefore, I'll be producing a five part video series in which I'll walk you through each of these steps in more detail. So let's debunk this process. The first step is getting started as well as networking. And this is what I'll be covering in the second part of this video. The second video I'll be working on is everything about the behavioral interview process. And this is much like any form of interview that you would have at another company. So understanding why you're a good candidate and what your strengths and weaknesses are. After that, we'll be going through the elusive taste interview process, giving you visibility into what you should expect, how you can prepare for it, and also how you can stand out during. Finally, I'll be giving you tips in how to follow up, as well as how to prepare for the next step in your consulting journey. So let's jump right into part one, getting started. So first, you want to try to figure out whether consulting is something for you or not. So here are a couple of characteristics of the people who will tend to thrive in consulting. First of all, you want to make sure that you're curious. You'll be working on different types of projects all the time, and therefore you need to be really comfortable learning new things. Next, you're willing to put yourself out there. You'll be constantly required to speak up and to bring your voice to the table, so you have to be the type of person who's comfortable taking initiative. Obviously, consulting can get pretty crazy at times, so you have to be a hard worker and someone who's really willing to put in the hours when is necessary. Fourth, you're someone who's comfortable with uncertainty and also able to make your own way. You'll be thrown into so many situations where there's not a single right answer, and you'll have to exercise judgment to figure out what the best way to solve it is. Finally, you're someone who enjoys networking as well as getting to know new people. Working in consulting, you're constantly in a recruitment process in order to get staffed on projects by managers and partners. Therefore, you have to be comfortable expanding your circle to get to know these people in order to grasp those opportunities. So in terms of my own experience, I realized consulting was for me after my first year at McGill when I was actually interning with a fashion brand. And I really thought that this was the perfect job for me. But throughout the summer, I found myself wanting to take part in more strategic discussions and also taking more initiative in the work that I was doing. So after doing a little bit of research, I found out that consulting was a sort of launching pad where you could go straight out of school in order to work with top executives in various industries, solving some of the most major problems in business. So I really hope you recognize yourself in some of the points I just brought up. And if you did, let's go into the next section. So a few prerequisites for getting into consulting. And I want to start off with a bit of a controversial topic, and that's GPA. And I get asked this question so freaking much. Does GPA matter? And here's my answer. It kind of does, and it also kind of doesn't. GPA matters in that it can act as a first gating in the consulting process. Simply put, your application might not even be considered if it's below a certain GPA. And honestly, when it comes to that, there's no exact number, but I would say that if you're around a 3.5, I wouldn't worry so much. If you're less than that, you might have to buff up your application with extracurriculars as well as some networking, which I'll get into a bit later. So with that in mind, let's jump into the next prerequisite, and that's extracurriculars. So honestly, regardless of how high your GPA is, I think you should be getting involved in some extracurriculars. Find something that you really love and try to make a difference with it across campus. Whether that's being in a frat or a sorority, working for the consulting association, or even being part of the student body, anything works as long as you're happy with it and you're willing to put in the time and effort to really be a leader in that group. Why are extracurriculars so important? Well, first, it shows recruiters that you're passionate about something, that you like to take initiative, and that you're comfortable being in positions of leadership. Also, when you get into consulting firms, it's not like all the extracurricular stuff that you were doing in university is over. Actually, within most firms, you have a ton of different clubs, inclusivity groups, social events, and people are constantly looking for individuals who will step up and help with the planning of these activities. And finally, I want to debunk something that even I used to believe in, and that's this stereotype that only math finance and maybe engineering majors can be successful in the recruitment process and that could not be further from the truth. As a marketing and digital innovation student, I didn't even see myself being able to apply to consulting because I wasn't the typical background of what they looked for. If I'm being honest, consulting recruiters are looking for people who are smart, who are able to take initiative, and who learn really quickly. 
So whether you studied biology, art history, or mechanical engineering, know that there's a place for you to add to the conversation that you'll be happy in and be able to thrive in. So now you've figured out the consulting's for you, you've got the prerequisites to apply. Your next step is figuring out where to apply. And there's about four buckets of consulting firms that you can apply to. So first of all, you've got MBB. Next, you've got Big Four. Then you have your other firms, for lack of a better word. And finally, you've got your niche or boutique consulting firms. So let's start with MBB. This is McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. These are top strategic consulting firms in which you'll do shorter projects where you'll deep dive into very specific topics during your time at the firms. Next, you've got your Big Four. So traditionally accounting firms, these are made up of EY, KPMG, Deloitte, as well as PwC. And in these firms, you'll tend to be put on larger scale tech or supply chain implementations. They also do a lot of financial advisory and some more strategic work. Next, you have your other firms, for lack of a better word. So these are your Oliver Wyman's or Roland Berger, where you'll also do a lot of strategic work. And then finally, you have your niche consulting firms, and there are countless of these that you can find in any city where you live. These firms specialize in everything from specific technologies such as SAP or Salesforce, or even work in strategic work for specific industries. So now that you understand the landscape a little bit better, you need to figure out which of these firms is the best for you. And in order to do this, you have to go about your own recruitment process. So yeah, of course, firms are looking to recruit you and you have to put your best foot forward. However, you are also trying to find where your skills and knowledge will be best used. Therefore, you have to treat this as a mutual selection process. And honestly, this will really help with your confidence and nerves going through this as well. So in order to jumpstart this process, I really recommend that you start with some on-campus resources. The first thing you can do is try to speak to a career advisor within your faculty, or alternatively, you can try to reach out to some consulting associations on campus. I know that most schools have one, at least McGill did have the McGill Consulting Association, so definitely try to Google it to see if there is. So the last thing I want to note here is that there are two consulting recruitment waves. You've got your internship recruitment process as well as your new grad or full-time recruitment process. Even though it's a little bit more competitive as there are less spots to fill, I highly recommend that you try to get into the internship recruitment process. Whether you're successful in getting it or not, getting visibility into what this entire process looks like will really give you a leg up as you'll get to know more people and know what to expect. Additionally, if you do get the internship, you'll be able to understand people's ways of working and also what type of projects you'll be working on which will really help with your transition from school to full-time work. I was able to intern at the company that I'm currently at after my second year of university, and I cannot stress enough how much this helped me with my own transition, as well as making new friends and feeling comfortable in the work that I do. So now that you've gotten the basics, let's discuss how to network as well as how to stand out. The first thing that you wanna do is to clean up your LinkedIn profile. You're gonna to wanna to get a professional picture as this is usually the only way that recruiters will be able to physically identify you. Next, create a relevant headline. If you're the president or an executive of a club at the school that you're at, totally add that in. If you have any relevant work experience that you've done in the past, add that in as your headline. Or if all else fails, just put that you're a student at X university with X major. You wanna write a bibliography, no, no. You wanna write a biography that's realistic and puts you in the best light, but also doesn't come off as douchey, which is much more common than you'd think. Finally, add in all your work experience on your profile. So this can be everything from part-time jobs to past internships and also any on-campus activities that you do or are a leader of. You're gonna to wanna to write out a couple of bullet points for each of these past experiences. Essentially, treat this as if it's your CV. So the second step of this process is to reach out to people who already work at the firm that you're interested in. Why is this important? Well, first of all, you'll kickstart your recruitment process. You'll get to learn a bit more about the firm that you wanna work at. And also you'll get to make a connection with someone who works there. So here's a little secret that most people don't know. Unlike at a lot of firms where HR does most of the heavy lifting during the recruitment process, consulting is a little bit different in that the people within the team actually select the candidates. In fact, people at all levels, from business analysts to directors, are involved in the CV screening, the actual interviews, as well as the selection of the candidates. Thus, it's really important that you start early in building connections with people in the team. So I know this can be pretty daunting. How do you go about doing this? Well, I think LinkedIn is a pretty good way to start, which is why I told you to clean it up a little bit earlier. You can use LinkedIn to identify people in the team that you actually wanna join, and also use their messaging functionality to actually reach out to them. However, here's my pro tip. Use LinkedIn to actually identify the person, and then look online for email templates for the firm you're trying to reach out to. Then take the time to actually craft an email to that person instead of using the LinkedIn messaging functionality. I promise this is a much better way to catch their attention. So then what? Well, first you want to introduce yourself and find a point in common between you and this other person. For example, you went to the same university as them. Next, 
mention you're interested in learning more about Xfirm and say that you'd like to learn more in the context of a coffee chat, whether this be over the phone, over video chat, or even in person. Although I do recommend that you try to go to them. Ask if they would be free to discuss some of your questions about the firm you have to come prepared to these, and then plan it. And usually they'll be really keen to sit down with you for a couple of minutes for a coffee chat. So now the coffee chats themselves. Well, first of all, try to find a location that's pretty close for them. I recommend you take this time to ask questions that you cannot Google. I repeat, questions you cannot Google. Ask them the types of projects they work on, why they decided to go into consulting, what their typical day looks like. All of these questions in which you'll be able to put yourself in their shoes and see what your life would be like if you actually worked at this consulting firm. These are usually pretty informal, but I do recommend that you come wearing business casual clothing. This is your first opportunity to make a good impression on the team and you wanna show that you're taking this really seriously. So now I want to discuss the elusive networking portion of the consulting recruitment process. Consulting firms are great in that they always have some sort of networking event going on. Whether it's a case competition, a summit, or a conference, there are so many opportunities for you to meet people at the firm, so I really urge you to take them. However, there's a really big difference between attending a networking event and standing out at one. So here are my tips for doing so. So the first thing you want to do is come prepared knowing the basics about the company that you're applying to. The last thing you want to do is ask questions during this precious time about stuff that you could easily Google. Second, be confident. If you're scared shitless, just fake it. I cannot stress how important this is. I have been in so many situations where there's been about five candidates in a group with one or two recruiters and only one person is talking. You will not be able to stand out if you don't actually speak at these networking events. Thus, you need to feel comfortable jumping into a conversation, asking your questions and engaging with the recruiters or even just the consultants in the room themselves in order to really leave your mark. So my third piece of advice during these networking sessions is to leverage the connections you already had. So there's a reason why I'm presenting these in this order. If you follow the process, then at this point, you should have a couple of connections through coffee chats that you previously had, and they'll be able to introduce you to other team members who can ultimately help you in your journey. So after you've attended these networking events and had your coffee chats, you need to follow up. The best way to do this is by email follow-up about one to two days after you've met them. You want to start by thanking them for their time and recalling a couple of points that you had in common or really connected over. This can be tidbits of the conversation or even just a interesting fact that you found out. Next, this is your time to shine. Reiterate why you'd be a good candidate as well as why you're interested in this specific firm. You need to have a call to action in your follow-up. So this is the next step that you would like their support in. So my advice is to ask them whether they'd be willing to have a mock case interview with you. And essentially this will help you get a better understanding of what the case interview process looks like at that firm. If not, you can also ask them who they recommend that you speak to within the team to get to know more people. This should be before you actually get into the formal recruitment process so that you can have allies on your side um, who are going to vouch for you during those sessions. So thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the second episode in this five part series all about the consulting recruitment process. Additionally, if there's anything else you'd like me to discuss, write it down in the comments below or reach out to me on Instagram at Tamara underscore Belair. Cheers. Thanks.